My Irish grandparents came to South Dakota in 1881. There we show that with the farming practices that we've used over the years, the soil is better now than it was 130 years ago. We're doing many things so that our farming is sustainable. I graduated from South Dakota State in 1958 and narrowed my graduate school down to MIT, Cornell, and Stanford and just chose Stanford. The second weekend at Stanford, there were four of us in one of these graduate student rooms and one fellow brought in some wine from uh, Lake County. Where I'd grown up, uh, we'd had very little wine, so this fellow came down with a, a bottle of, might have been Zinfandel. It was just really good. I got started by uh, taking short courses, but I'm also a civil engineer, and so I was very interested in soils and great growing or wine growing, soils and climate. I bought my first land in uh, 1971 in Greenfield in Monterey County, wanting to grow Cabernet. 40 years ago, we wanted gravelly, well-drained soil. That was just the mantra of where you should really grow grapes. I'm from the wine side of things. I'm not a business person, but I know what makes wines taste good. So really from the very beginning, Jerry has always been very supportive of the needs of winemaking and ultimately what we need to do and what needs to be used to make the best wine. You know, we are given that opportunity to experiment, to try new things, just try to continue to increase our perception of what the quality is, which for us, I think, is a balance of fruit. It's a balance of richness on the palate, an integration of oak into those wines like Chardonnay and Cabernet that's really balanced. Going through school in the early 80s, you know, Pastor Robles was really new on the map. The wines people knew really were, were Zinfandel, and there were some early examples of Cabernet that, that had done particularly well in that region, and were, you know, picking up notice from the, from the wine writers. So when I started working with Jerry uh, several years ago now, we're able to kick it up a notch. There's just so much focus on the details. We're in search of that perfect wine on every wine we make. And it doesn't matter whether it's in the Cuvée series or in, in the Vineyard series or in the Estate series. There's just an amazing dedication to quality. We commit a lot of resources to monitoring the, the water stress in our vineyards. Ultimately, that's what makes the wines of J. Lore so attractive is just that retention of nice fruit character. We've had a philosophy of sustainability ever since I started because I grew up in a farm. Sustainability is all about taking care of the earth, the people, and your community. To be tremendous stewards of the land, whereby every decision we make will lead us on the right path for generations to come. We here at J. Lohr now are the largest solar tracking system anywhere in a winery. Which now provides over 75% of the energy needed to make our wine and to support our wine center here in Paso Robles. At J. Lore, we believe that giving back to communities and inspiring others is a critical value. So UC Davis had been operating out of a winery that was actually built in 1938. And for a world-class wine university, they needed something clearly better. So Jerry helped them design a brand new winery. This is the world's first LEED Platinum certified winery. Several years ago, I joined the board of the Paso Robles Wine Country Alliance. What we do here is promote the grapes and wines of Paso Robles. Three years ago, after the untimely death of our mother, Carol, we forged a partnership with National Breast Cancer Foundation. A portion of sales from the two Carol's Vineyard products, the Carol's Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon and Carol's Vineyard Sauvignon Blanc, to help provide mammograms for women in need. Up in Greenfield in the Royal Seiko Appalachian in Monterey County, we have offerings such as our Riverstone Chardonnay and our Bay Mist White Riesling, but we also have some new wines like our Falcon's Perch Pinot Noir. And then up in Napa, in the St. Helena Appalachian, we have our Carol's Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc. We've got cane pruned, we've got cordon pruned, we've got blender varieties like Malbec and Petit Verdot. 
Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and all this great diversity of wines allows us to really make amazing wine every year and some real rock star wines. It's been incredibly rewarding, I'm sure, for Jerry and a lot of the folks who've been here for a while to see the company grow. As a person who's a family member but only been with the company for about six years, it's incredibly satisfying and very fulfilling. We really work not just as a team, but really as, as a big family. Well, I'm just so proud that our three children have all chosen to come back into the business and now become major owners. One of the really uh, gratifying things to me, a blending the children with the other employees that have been with me for a number of years. That doesn't often happen with, with other vineyards and wineries. So it's that taking care of people and in turn, they'll take care of you and the company and their fellow employees. You know, kind of a custodial feeling about the region because I figure somebody sitting in the middle of the United States in, in the Farm Belt, their first chance to taste Paso Robles is likely going to be a glass of Paso Robles Cab, Seven Oaks from J. Lore. And we're just so proud and pleased to be able to bring such a nice wine to their table. The end result of all of our efforts is deeply flavorful wines representative of their appellations, respectful of their terroir, nurtured by our winemakers to be enjoyed at your table. It's far beyond anything I'd ever, ever dreamed when I started the wine. I just wanted to have people enjoy our wine at the time.